The Big 12 Conference may have a UConn dilemma. I'm Pete Mundo at Heartland College Sports. It is great to be here with you as always as we roll through another show. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube and, of course, on the podcast. We appreciate you being here. So, uh, The Athletic had this report on, I guess it would have been Thursday, and it talked about conference realignment, where we stand, ACC, everything else. And uh, UConn and the Big 12 is where this article with The Athletic went when it came to the Big 12 Conference. Talking about Max Olson, uh, Nicole Auerbach with The Athletic had this piece. So the dilemma right now, if you read this piece, is that Brett Yormark, the Big 12 commissioner, has a lot of interest, or at least is interested, I can't say how much, but is interested in UConn. And there may be some pushback within the Big 12 about adding UConn. But here's my thing. I think we're looking at college sports in an old school way. We're looking at college sports and we're saying, hey, this is the Big 12 Conference. This is the SEC. This is the Big 10. And I think what Brett Yormark is doing in part is he's basically envisioning this. And this is my opinion. But I think what his vision is, is to say the Big 12 is one umbrella. And within the umbrella of the Big 12, there will be a basketball conference, there will be a football conference, and there will be a baseball, softball, wrestling, golf, whatever else conference. Not every team that plays baseball or plays basketball has to play football and vice versa. And I think that's where a lot of us look at college sports very linear. And we say, if you're in the Big 12, you're going to play all the sports and everything else. But right now, it's not that way in the Big 12. Look at Big 12 baseball, Big 12 wrestling, Big 12 softball, right? There's there's mixing and matching going on there. So why would the Big 12 not look into doing that differently for the major revenue sports? It's something that we really haven't thought about and talked about. And I believe that's part of what Brett Yormark is thinking here when it comes to UConn. So here's what The Athletic reports. The Athletic writes here, It's certainly no secret at this point that the Big 12 is interested in swiping Colorado and Arizona from the Pac-12. Obviously, we all know that. But with that league's, but they write here, but with that league's media rights negotiation, if I could get my place here, dragging on into the summer and the leaders at those schools continuing to stand by for a final offer, the wait will test the patience of Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark. Your mark continues to explore his options for expanding the Big 12 into a 14 or 16 member conference going forward. Nothing seems imminent in terms of extending invitations to new members, but the first year commissioner is doing his homework. And UConn is one of several schools on his radar, Big 12 sources told The Athletic. They go on the right. Your mark has made it well known he's willing to double down on the Big 12's advantage as the strongest college basketball conference in the country if he sees targets that add value. UConn's men's basketball title run this spring certainly sparked more interest for your mark, and the school is viewed as a potential good fit for several strategic regions. reasons. Championship caliber men's and women's basketball programs are certainly high on that list of pros, but so is the opportunity to establish more of a presence in the New York City market. The Athletic goes on the right. How would UConn football fit? The Huskies are coming off one of their best seasons in quite some time. Jim Mora pulled off a dramatic turnaround in his debut season, winning six games and getting the program to a bowl game for the first time since 2015. The Huskies haven't finished with a winning record since they were Big East co-champs back in 2010 and played Oklahoma in the Fiesta Bowl. They've had six head coaches since then and have lost nine or more games in seven of their past nine seasons. But, the Athletic writes, if they were given resources and a platform that the Big 12 offers, could they become a more legitimate program by the end of the decade? So, your mark, they write here, is viewing these expansion prospects more from a professional lens, seeing things in terms of future upside more than past achievements. He's looking at programs he can invest in by helping build up their brands so they eventually make the Big 12 more valuable, when it's time for the next TV deal in 2031. Let's stop there. That makes all the sense in the world. It makes all the sense in the world for Brett Yormark to say, you know what, right now, okay, UConn just won the national title 
in basketball. We know what they are as a basketball program and what they've got going on right now. But the football team with Big 12 money actually has a chance to be somewhat decent. It gets us into the New York City market. Um, We know that UConn is obviously an established brand there. And if Brett Yormark is looking at this from what helps me renegotiate my TV deal in 2031, you can make a strong case for UConn. So I get Brett Yormark's vision here. But the pushback may ultimately come from the Big 12. One challenge for your mark, writes The Athletic, would be building consensus among his board of Big 12 presidents and chancellors. There's some skepticism amongst league sources about whether UConn would become quality and value for the conference. Would they add value? Now, your mark thus far has enjoyed strong support from his board to pursue what he thinks is best since he was hired. It's easy for presidents and ADs to get on board with Pac-12 schools, right? But going in this direction would take much more discussion and convincing. So this is different. Everybody's going to say, sure, bring in Arizona, bring in Colorado, bring in Arizona State, Utah, yeah, I don't know. But, you know, certainly those three. UConn is going to be a tougher sell. But we know that Brett Yormark is a New York City guy who loves basketball. And UConn checks off two of those boxes. In a big way. Now, if you sit there and say, Pete, it's in Connecticut. Uh, UConn is, frankly, I would say more of a New York City basketball brand than St. John's. Because St. John's has been so terrible for so long in college basketball. Now, maybe they start turning the corner with Rick Pitino. But that has been a bad brand for going on you know, a couple decades now. UConn has multiple national championships in the last 20 to 25 years. Uh, and a lot of those alums are right there in the New York City area. So that is a big New York City area brand. We know that Brett Yormark and the Big 12 want to tap into that, especially as a basketball conference. I mean, it's a it's a you know what I'm saying. It's the best basketball conference in the country. It's a great football conference. It is the best basketball conference in the country. And I believe in part what may be attractive here for Brett Yormark ties into what I was talking about earlier. Brett Yormark may have a vision of saying when the next TV contract comes around, 2031, we'll peel off the basketball rights from the football rights. We will sell the basketball rights separately from the football rights. And you could theoretically have two very different looking conferences in basketball and football. Not very, but there may be some teams that don't play Big 12 football that play Big 12 basketball like UConn and vice versa. You could have that. That's theoretical. But you could have it. And then you basically are selling two conferences, two sports, and kind of two different conferences under the umbrella of the Big 12, even if those teams aren't identical and don't line up perfectly. You could say, okay, well, I've got you know these Big 12 basketball uh, games. I'm going to sell ESPN or Fox or whoever. And then I've got the Big 12 football package. And you might get bonus some softball and some baseball, but you're going to be selling basketball and football. And Brett Yormark is of the belief that the basketball rights, with t- which typically have been thrown in as added value on the football side, are worth much more than simply being added value. And if he's trying to create a super conference for college basketball, then you know what? This may be the vision that ultimately makes an enormous amount of sense. For Brett Yormark. Now, the other side of the coin here is what does UConn want to do? The Athletic says that, you know, there are sources within UConn that are skeptical about the Huskies leaving the Big East for the Big 12. Why? Well, remember, UConn was in the AAC. And UConn was in a disjointed conference, you know... (laughs) You're playing Memphis. You're playing all these teams in the AAC. And you're not in your Northeast Corridor. You're not playing Georgetown and Villanova and St. John's. And the article goes on to say here, one of UConn's biggest frustrations with the AAC was the disjointed spread out nature, as well as the loss of the traditional basketball rivals in the Northeast. When the Huskies returned to the Big East in June of 2019, They celebrated that announcement at Madison Square Garden with banners, signs, paraphernalia that made it clear they felt they were back where they belonged. So one Big E source told The Athletic, quote, 
They just worked so hard to get out of a league that required them to go play UCF. Just to now go back to a league where they have to play UCF? I don't see it. So that's what one Big East source says. Now, of course, a Big East source is going to want UConn to stay in the Big East because the Big East continues to get diluted if the national champions leave. That is not what the Big East Conference wants right now by any stretch of the imagination, right? That makes no sense whatsoever. So you get it. The Big East source is going to say, why are you going to bother? Why are you going to do this? And that's where the broader vision of the future of the Big 12 should be about looking at this and saying, how do we line up some basketball schools that don't necessarily have to play football? Could you peel off several Big East schools, fold them into the Big 12 umbrella, and you could have pods, you could split up the conference, whatever it looks like. If you've got 20 teams that are playing Big 12 basketball, and they're all the Big 12 teams, plus UConn, Georgetown, Villanova, you know, if you want to include uh, a school like Marquette or Xavier or Butler, I mean, I'm not saying the whole Big East, but if you want to be picky about some Big East teams, count me in. I mean, that makes sense. You could have that kind of Northeast pod that is part of a super conference for basketball. And not all those schools have to play football. And then in 2031, you're selling football rights and you're selling basketball rights. And they theoretically could be almost two different conferences, but they're all under the Big 12 umbrella. And that's where I believe this is heading in large part. This is trending in that direction. And when you think about it, I believe it starts to make some sense. Now, UConn Athletic Director uh, David Benedict told Connecticut Insider this week that any future realignment decisions would be a complicated question for the school. He said, quote, The dialogue and the commentary out there, I totally appreciate and understand people's opinions. Where they're emotionally tied is probably evident when you see what people say and what their opinions are. But obviously, we look at it with a different lens. Internally, and there are a lot of factors you have to consider, at this point in time, I'm not aware of a decision in front of me that I have to make. There's a lot of posturing going on around the country, blah, blah, blah. So basically, he's saying nothing. That's what... Um, UConn AD David Benedict is saying. He's saying basically what everybody says in this situation. Well, there's nothing in front of me right now, so, you know, who knows what will happen. Well, okay, let's wait and see. I mean, he's giving you nothing there. He's not saying no, though. And that's the most important thing. He's not saying no. Now, I don't know what the money would look like if UConn came in. Are they going to play football or not? I would imagine they would play football because they have a D1 football program. But would the Big 12 schools want to go out there and want to, you know, share that money? I I don't know. And that's going to be a tough sell. It won't be a tough sell for Colorado or Arizona. We know that. It will be a tougher sell for a school like UConn. Now, I thought this was interesting, too. I wanted to share this with you because some of these national media goobers can't get enough of themselves. They're clueless. Stuart Mandel, um, uh, here's what he put up on Twitter about this story. Stu Mandel writes, UConn is a basketball school. It was stuck in no man's land until it got back into the Big East, and now it's thriving again. Big 12 would benefit football, but does it want its hoops teams playing Texas Tech and Baylor, and now BYU, instead of Georgetown, Villanova, and Providence? I I don't know. I I know Stu is supposed to be a football first guy. He clearly doesn't watch much college basketball. I mean, you'd hate to play Texas Tech, right, who was the runner-up for the 2019 National Championship. Uh, You'd hate to play Baylor, who won the national title, you know, two years ago. I'd hate to be playing teams like Texas Tech and Baylor. They've only been in national championship games within the last five years. Uh, That that wouldn't make a lot of sense right there, Big Stu. Goodness gracious, brother. Just look at the – I mean, do a little bit of homework. Just just like a just a hint of homework. Not not much, my man. Just a hint is all it's going to take to get your head on straight and realize that that commentary is D-U-M-B dumb. Not shocking, but dumb. So there's a lot here to digest. There's a lot here to look at from a Big 12 perspective. And also from a UConn perspective, I, I'm not convinced necessarily it makes a ton of sense unless... It's part of a broader pull of taking four Big East teams 
that fit with UConn and saying you're all coming under the Big 12 umbrella. We're going to have the super conference of Kansas and Baylor um, and, and, you know, Iowa State and K-State. And yes, Texas Tech and West Virginia, but then also, and by the way, West Virginia fits in with the old Big 12 teams, Villanova, Providence, Georgetown, uh, UConn, whatever combo you want. That, I don't think UConn alone works, but I think it can, and they can be convinced with other teams coming in just for basketball. And then you've got the Super Conference of College Basketball, which helps you work towards a huge basketball-only contract in 2031 with then a separate football contract as well. That's how I see this making the most sense for everybody involved. So watch that very closely because I think in large part that is where we are potentially headed down the road. In the meantime, we sit here and we wait. We wait for the Pac-12 to likely implode. And um, I would say that's happening. I I think six weeks is kind of what's going to happen here. July 1 is a soft deadline of when we'll find out what exactly is going on. I'm Pete Mundo at heartlandcollegesports.com. Hey, on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Share us on Facebook. We appreciate you being here and being a part of the show, as always. And on the podcast, you know what to do. I've got 100 new koozies here i got to send out. So take 30 seconds, hit that five-star rating, review the show, and then send me a screenshot. It'll take you 30 seconds. Send me a screenshot to Pete Mundo, M-U-N-D-O, at heartlandcollegesports.com, and we'll get you all hooked up with a free Heartland College Sports koozie. We have the number one Big 12 podcast uh, out there, and it's because of you, not because of some massive marketing budget. Even though we're now reaching, you know, millions of Big 12 fans on a monthly basis on all of our platforms at Heartland College Sports. And that's because of you. Nobody else. That's because of you. Subscribe. We appreciate you. And have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. I'm Pete Mundo, Heartland College Sports. Take care.